All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the structures of a human ovary. Now, this is what I like to call a hypothetical human ovary. The reason I call it hypothetical is it's got all the structures that you might find in an ovary at any point during one 28-day average reproductive cycle of a human female. But if you were to look at an ovary at any point, um, you would not see all the structures. You'd only see one of the structures, depending on which, which day we're in. So we're going to start by looking at the beginning of the cycle, counting that as the first day of the reproductive flow, the first day of the menstrual flow. And at that time, about day one, day one there, we've got what are called primordial follicles. These are follicles that have not yet been stimulated by the hormone FSH to develop into active primary follicles. Now, one of these follicles is going to be stimulated by FSH during the first few days of the reproductive cycle, say all around day four. And one of those primordial follicles is going to develop and be stimulated by FSH and start to grow. And within that, we're going to have the primary oocyte. And that is going to be stimulated, continuing on, say we're about day, oh, I don't know, about day eight or nine here. The follicle here continues to grow, grows bigger, develops further, develops even further. We're now, oh, say maybe day 12. And now we're approaching the midpoint of the cycle, day 14 on average in a 28-day cycle. And that's uh, when we're going to have a completely mature follicle. Well, let's call this day 13 because it hasn't quite ruptured yet. And here we can see right here, it is now ruptured. So this would be ovulation. Now, in the image here, they're calling this an ovulated ovum. Technically, it's a secondary oocyte. We're not going to split hair, so it's, it's a, an ovum capable of being fertilized by a sperm um, once it ends up in the, in the ovidite. Uh, so, from this phase, what I've written in blue here, we could refer to all this from day 1 through to day 14 as the follicular phase. And it's called the follicular phase because there is an active follicle developing during that time. Sometimes you'll see ovulation referred to as the ovulatory phase. It's more just an event than a whole phase, but it triggers a change. And the change is from the follicular phase into what we call the luteal phase. And the luteal phase is the remainder of the 28-day cycle. So from day 14, which we have here, ovulation, through to the end of the cycle. Again, we're talking about averages here, day 28. So what happens here is the ruptured follicle becomes a corpus luteum. Now, the function of the corpus luteum is to uh, maintain production of progesterone and estrogen. Those two hormones are going to be secreted because that uh, ovulated ovum right here, if it becomes fertilized, it's going to need an endometrium to land in. And to maintain the endometrium, we need uh, progesterone to keep the uterus from contracting and keep that endometrium healthy. So the corpus luteum continues to grow, continues to develop, continues to produce um, more progesterone and estrogen. Uh, well, this would be probably about, call this about day 18. So this could be about day 22. And then towards the end of the cycle, uh, the endometrium is going to need to be shed if that ovum wasn't fertilized. Uh, if it was fertilized, well, that's a whole other story. But if it's not fertilized, corpus luteum is no longer needed to produce that progesterone. We want to shed that endometrium. So we need less of it. And what's going to happen is the corpus luteum is going to degenerate. And it degenerates into a structure called a corpus albicans. Literally, it just means a white body in the ovary. And that would be left over at the end of one reproductive cycle. Uh, the levels of progesterone and estrogen will fall because that, um, that corpus luteum is no longer producing large quantities of progesterone and estrogen. And that brings us to an end of the cycle. Now, that's assuming that the woman did not become pregnant. If she did become pregnant, well, another structure is going to take over producing that progesterone uh, during pregnancy. But that's that's another section, another another video. All right, so what would this look like if we were to see a diploma man question on this? Well, 
let me erase what we've got here. And let's just scroll up a little bit. And we can see, oh, here's a diploma exam question on that same basic hypothetical overview. Uh, first thing you notice, they flipped this one around. We were looking at, uh, in the previous one, the uh, right ovary. This time we're looking at the left ovary. So things are just going to be in reverse. What we need to do is we need to establish when certain events occur. We've obviously got numbers 1, 2, and 3 here that we have to worry about. Well, I can see that right here, that's one thing I can tell for sure. That's ovulation. So that's occurring on or around day 14 of a reproductive cycle. So what's being ovulated? Well, we already established that this is an ovum. Uh, again, te technically a secondary oocyte, but in the biology 30 curriculum, we use those words interchangeably. So an ovum has been ovulated. So what we have to figure out is what direction is this going? Is this, is this diagram going clockwise or counterclockwise from day one to day 24? So we have to look at some other clues here to see what's going on. And the clue I see here is that to me this looks like we have an oocyte there and it looks like this is the structure within which the oocyte is going to develop. So this to me right here, structure number one, looks like a developing follicle. So if that's a follicle and, and we've got ovulation occurring here, that tells me that the cycle is going in this direction, this way, from day 1 to day 28. So that would make this side the follicular phase. And it would make anything after ovulation over on this side the luteal phase, which would make this structure right here a functioning corpus luteum. And all we have to do in this diagram is label the parts that we figured out already. So the ovum is number two, the follicle is number one, and the corpus luteum is number three. Now how this ranks in terms of diploma exam questions, well this is pretty, uh, pretty much on the low end of it. Uh, they could ask a, a, perhaps a more interesting question here. They could ask, well, which structure in the diagram is secreting progesterone? And you would say, well, the corpus luteum is secreting progesterone. That's structure number three. That's this one right here. They might ask, which structures are secreting estrogen? Now that, we have to be very careful because the corpus luteum secretes progesterone. It secretes progesterone after ovulation as well as secreting uh, estrogen. But the follicle also makes estrogen. So if that's what's screening estrogen, we've got two answers. We've got the follicle and the corpus luteum, depending on which part of the cycle, follicular phase or luteal phase, we're referring to.